points of access. With Philip White. Accessibility testing of applications. Many of you might want to know how we test applications for accessibility. So today I'm going to go through some of the tests that I do in testing software, especially online software. This is a time card employee operation for keeping track of things like military leaves, bonus vacation, sick time, and so forth. And so employees have to use this software to be able to input their information. However, when I test it with the keyboard, I'm not able to get it to work effectively. You'll see that when I'm navigating around the screen, that some things pop up and I can make my selection. Like if I wanted to put sick time in for Monday the 6th, I could do that. I can put my eight hours in and I can press enter. So I can put that information in there. But I need to get up over here to the save button or to calculate total in case I wanted to put more information in. So I'm going to reverse my tab and you see it's going through the table and eventually it should get up there and right now it's over here at current pay period right there and then if I press tab again maybe if I continue to reverse maybe it will go down to those buttons Nope, it's up at the URL. So I'm going to go back to there. And you see, I just can't navigate in here. I can put information in, but I can't save it. I can't approve the time card with the keystrokes alone, and that's fundamental. When I'm in this application and I'm using a screen reader, there's few things that I want to look at. I want to look at whether I can get to the buttons and the controls. This is a control. This is a control. I want to know if there's any links and any headings. Now JAWS is the screen reader I'm using. JAWS 17 that is. I'm going to show you some of the commands inside of JAWS first. One of the commands is to press the insert key and F5. Select the form field dialog. List one list view. And there you have Refresh. the buttons. buttons. Unlabeled 12 but un refresh. You see the alerts. refresh alerts button? That's this button here. But you see the unlabeled 11 button? I have no idea what that is. And down here are the controls that say enter pay code. And it tells me what days they're at and that I can enter the pay codes and do the daily totals, but it's just showing me a line in the table basically. So let's see what else I can do. That was insert F5. Now insert F6 is the headings. No headings found. And as you hear, there are no headings, but if I press insert F7, it shows me the links. One at five. The links themselves are not even visible. So I looked for controls with insert F5, I looked for headings with insert F6, and I looked for the links with insert F7. I would also take the tab key. Tab. Tab. Not in a table. Not in a table. And currently I am in please choose the pay code. So I should be able to press the space bar. Space. And make a selection. Blank. And as you see it says bonus vacation right now if I press down arrow again blank it should change it blank 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 and blank. it's not doing it blank so the control isn't working effectively with a screen reader either 
In this third test, I'm going to use Dragon Dictate version 13 to attempt to trigger some of the commands that I was unable to do using the keyboard and with JAWS. The first thing I want to do is I want to change the bonus vacation to sick time and enter in one of the fields over here the time that I took off. So I'm going to start with mouse grid 4, 7, 3, 3, click, move mouse left, move mouse down, faster, move mouse right, move mouse right, move mouse down, click, move mouse left, click, go to sleep. I wanted to tell you where I was going to put the time. I'm going to put it under Tuesday 11:14. Wake up. Mouse grid. 5 7 3 2 Click. 8 Move mouse down. Click. Go to sleep. So I was able to enter the sick time, and I was able to enter the amount of time. Now let's see if I can go up and click Calculate Totals. Mouse grid. 3. 8. 8. 1. Click. Go to sleep. So over here, we have our sick time under pay code and our time over here under November 14th. And it also has a time of daily total. So I'm able to do everything that I wanted to do with my voice activation software. There's several tests that I run when I'm trying to determine whether someone with a visual impairment is going to be able to work with an application like this. The first thing I want to see is if I press the control and the plus, if it enlarges the text of the application, and it doesn't in this case. The next thing I would do is I would come over to my control panel and I would go to display and set it to 150%. After working with the system enlargement, you can also use a system tool called Magnifier. You're going to click on the start, type Magnifier. Magnifier puts a window down here where Wherever you put the pointer, it's going to magnify. Click on the magnifier up here to make adjustments to the size of the enlargement. You can come to the system here, the system settings for it, and turn off the inversion. So you want to make sure that all these things work. I'm going to close the magnifier out. Another system item that you want to look at would be the high contrast settings that you can set up. I'm going to click on start, control panels, go to the ease of access center, then click on this link that says make the computer easier to see. And you'll see I have a check mark for turn on and off high contrast using this keystroke. Alt, Shift, Print Screen. The Alt and Shift are on the left. You have to use those. You can't use the ones on the right. So I press left Alt, left Shift, and Print Screen. And you see that the high contrast works. That's another test that has passed. To turn it off, I press the same keystroke.
Another essential test is to run the software with a magnification software, such as Magic. This is Magic Screen Enlargement Software. There's also a software called ZoomText. You might want to use a software like this to test to see if it's going to work inside of your application. I'm going to click on the M here and magnify the screen. You see it's 2x. I'm going to make that larger and the screen corresponds. So that's working. And it also goes back as it's supposed to. Next we have different kinds of cursors that we can use. I'm going to use the big green. You see the cursor is now changed. It's larger. I'm going to invert the screen. So all this is working and that's what you want to see. You can also put a focus. So if I click on the application you see it's focused on this table. So make sure you test with a screen reading software and a screen enlargement software. One item that you don't want to miss is to make sure that there are good colors in the application. My recommendation is for you to download the color with a U contrast analyzer. So it's currently at different locations. I believe it's out of Australia. I'm just going to come up here to Pasillo Group and then click download. And if you have a Mac, if you have a Mac, you will see that there is a download for a Mac as well. So just click this and it will start downloading it to your download folder. So next you want to go to your downloads folder and you want to open the folder for color contrast analyzer. I'm going to run the 64-bit version. And here's the tool right here. So now let's go to our web page and try it out. Here we are back in our application that we've been testing and I want to check to make sure the color contrast between the background here and pay code is good. So I take the dropper and click on the foreground color which is the text. I take the other dropper or background and click on the blue. And you see it has passed all the tests. Now these grayed out ones basically are showing that these dates are not applicable to this particular time card. I don't see anything else that catches my eye but when you look at applications you might see that there are different colors and the text on the color may not be particularly very luminescent. So you want to check that. 